You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. I guess I should outline a bit about what these species are <laughs> instead of just whizzing through them. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> the numbat is a wonderful little animal. It's definitely my favourite uh, mammal in the world. Um, it, it's insectivorous. It only eats termites. It's diurnal, which is also makes it extremely unusual amongst the marsupials. Um, the quenda is a, the bandicoot is a, is a they're small um, sort of brownish looking animals. They're not very distinctive in colour, um, but uh, they're also do a lot of digging in their um, lifestyle. They, they dig for worms or underground um, soft bodied insects and, and other um, invertebrates. Uh, the Dazzy Urubs include the red tailed Fasca gale and the famous Antichinus that dies after mating, or the males do anyway. Hmm. Uh, and, and the Dibbler is another one in the same size range. It's another Dazzy Urub, a carnivorous marsupial. It uh, um, gets a little bit bigger. I think the largest one we've ever recorded is 135 grams. So good handful. Um, a really active little animal just absolutely never stops. Well, it does stop it. It goes flat out for about four hours in the evening and four hours in the morning, and then sleeps the rest of the day and night. Yes, that, that's one of the names that uh, we got from the indigenous people early on, very early on. And there was a there was quite a good relationship between um, Aboriginal people and, and the white settlers in the early days in Western Australia, certainly in parts of Western Australia, Albany, in where I live is, has a very good record, other places not so. But there was a, obviously a lot of exchange between the people and the, the, the Aboriginal people and the settlers and a lot of uh, their names, animals and plants are still used now. Uh, they were recorded early on and the, the, um, the farmers, the, the new, you know, the new settlers didn't try and call them hedgehogs and badges <laughs> which was which was definitely the case in Tasmania um, <clears throat> you know they even called the thylacine a tiger or a wolf and you know this sort of stuff but over here it's been actually it's very refreshing um, Ludwig Glaut who was the curator of the museum of Western Australia in the 1920s actually published a little paper recommending use of of na native names for marsupials and uh, I think it was just the marsupials he concentrated on and and so a lot of the names that he decided on because of course with different language groups you've got different names for the same animal <laughs> and he just uh, picked on on the dibbler and the numbat and um the null banger for the um for the pig the honey possum <laughs> and etc so that we've got those um those names still at hand if you'd like to listen to the full episode then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.